You know, lately we've heard a lot of RIM, RIM, RIM. RIM's going to fail or RIM's not going to be able to compete in the mobile market. And while that may not necessarily be true, they've definitely fallen behind versus where they were two or three years ago. What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and they're not taking that criticism laying down. Oh, no. They're releasing several devices, one of which is the BlackBerry Bold 9930. Now, this comes to Verizon on the 25th in retail stores and uh, is available now through Telesales for $249.99, $509.99 for retail. And it's landing on T-Mobile and Sprint in the coming days as well. So is this a BlackBerry to get? Can it compete though with Android, with iOS? Some of these devices that are either right at that 250 price point or even cheaper in the case of the iPhone. Can you recommend this when it's 50 bucks more than the iPhone 4, which is a very popular device? We're gonna try and find that out in the review, but first, special thanks to my friends at Best Buy because they're hooking us up with a bunch of phones just like this. I just went and picked them up at the store today, Evo 3Ds, all kinds of good stuff for you Star One Paw Bandit games. So when you go into Best Buy Mobile, you don't deal with rebates. I hate paperwork. I'm sure you do too. I hate dealing with rebates. I hate those stupid debit cards too. You walk in, you walk out, you won't mess with any rebates at Best Buy Mobile. Let's try this out and see if this is the device to get. So in part two, we're gonna start and kind of do a brief walkthrough of BlackBerry 7. If you're coming into this and you're like, I've used iOS, I've used Android or Windows Phone, you're coming from another platform, WebOS maybe, and you're considering BlackBerry, well, there are some changes to, Web, uh, to BlackBerry 7. Even if you're coming from like 5.0 or uh, one of the previous builds of uh, BlackBerry's OS, there are definitely some changes here that you need to see. First of all, you notice here's your home screen, here's your main screen, and uh, we'll go back up here. Now this is obviously one of the benefits of this device is the 2.8 inch touchscreen. Not only has the display resolution improved pretty significantly, but uh, and not only is it faster, but the touchscreen is a big benefit because I'm one of those people, I don't know about you, but I like to type, you know, I'll be using the trackpad. Then all of a sudden I'll come up here and pinch to zoom, do a little bit more done here. It's nice to have the option to do both and I like this form factor better. And this is clearly personal preference, but I like the form factor better than something like the Torch. 9810, uh, where it flips up and or where it slides up and slides down rather. So preserves that candy bar form factor, but gives you the touch screen. So you can see here, here's kind of your uh, your dashboard, if you will. Manage connections, your mobile networks on Verizon, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and then set my alarm clock. And I can come down here, look at options, service status, network, uh, networks and connections. And I can see options. So you can see in here, this is a change from past versions of BlackBerry, mostly uh, you know 5.0. And, uh, and older, you see this in BlackBerry 6. But some changes like to the icons, things like that. Sounds and ringtones, networks and connections display, typing and language, the device, call management, security, accessibility, third party, et cetera, and the options. I can come in here, for example, and change the, uh, the screen. I can change the font if I want to. I can change the font size, the style, smoothing if I want to, change the brightness. And I can come in here and, uh, and change the wallpaper by going to BlackBerry 7. We'll change it over to Change it over to something pretty. Let's do this leaf. How about that? And you can really see uh, the camera doesn't do it justice. I say that all the time. But you can see the uh, display changes here as opposed to something like the 9000. Some of the older devices, it's, uh, it's much improved. So we can go in here and hit set as wallpaper, change it to leaf, and you can see it's changed over there. It's kind of your dashboard again here. You can go over and quickly turn on Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and that's all accessed by clicking there. Now here's your notifications panel. When you get a text message, a BlackBerry message, something of that nature, an email, it's going to appear right beside that one, which you can see BlackBerry App World showing that version 2.0.0.45 is available. So you access your messages, your missed phone calls, things like that through here. And that uh, you can cl uh, quickly access that by clicking on it if you want to. And now I currently have no new notifications. Now search is over here. I come over here and type in old man, for example and it brings up Old Man, and I can extend that search out by clicking on anything like YouTube, the music store, Bing, BlackBerry App World, BlackBerry Maps, uh, et cetera. I can click there and it'll extend out Old Man to YouTube, for example, or Old Man to Facebook. So a little bit of a difference there. And of course, your profiles, when you're going into the movie theater, all you have to do is click over here and go to silent, click on that, and you're good to, uh, good to go. So, and to come back over here, this is something I didn't point out in the unboxing. And I do want to point out, this thing comes with Bing, pre-installed out of the box. So you get Bing, and then of course, once you click it and install it, you get Bing Maps uh, as well. Now, you know, a lot of people hate Bing. Honestly, it's not that bad. Bing Maps, now the integration with VZ Navigator is pretty frustrating, because they're trying to push you to VZ Navigator, which is 10 bucks a month. Uh, you get it free for 30 days, and it's 10 bucks per month. And so every time you go in to do something in Bing, it's like, do you want to do this over VZ Navigator, or do you want to do it over Bing? So it's a little bit of an ad uh, promotion type thing in there, but you can download Google Maps for BlackBerry as well pretty easily by going to Google's website. So not a, uh, not a huge thing for me at least there. So you go down through here and you see all of, your, uh, all of your applications. You can see these individual folders for instant messaging, 
You can see them for games, which Brick Breaker comes pre-installed. Then you can see them for applications. And in here, push to talk when it's available, notes, or memo pad rather, excuse me, a lot of personal information management slash organizational stuff in here, documents to go, files, you get BlackBerry Bridge, which I installed. Uh, unfortunately, my playbook's having issues. I was gonna show some of the syncing compatibilities with BlackBerry Bridge, how I can you know, access my emails, et cetera. On the playbook, for whatever reason, it's not charging up, so I don't know if the unit uh, is having issues or what, but that's why I'm, uh, I'm not showing it off in the video. Compass, BlackBerry Protect, things like that come in there. And of course, the settings, which I already showed you. Backup Assistant comes pre-installed. Social feeds, which is RIM's kind of social aggregation software here between Facebook, Twitter, all of those. And I don't have anything loaded up on this. But I can go to like, you know, social, for example, and if I had tweets, they would all show up under the social. So I don't really care for social feeds. I prefer to go to the individual applications, but if you do want something where you're like, let me bring in all my Facebook, all my Twitter stuff into one place, that's where it's gonna be. And then of course you have BlackBerry App World, which is you know painfully behind its competitors. And I don't want to install the update just yet because I wanna show you what it looks like, but painfully behind its competitors. And also something that's particularly interesting about the Bold, uh, or not just the Bold, but all the BlackBerry devices, a lot of the applications aren't available in the app world. You have to actually go outside of the app world to get them. For example, Fandango. I wanna download Fandango, I wanna see my movie apps. Well, of course, Fandango doesn't come up, but I'll show you over here on my uh, Bold 9930, you can see Fandango pre-installed right there. So you can definitely get it. You have to go to Fandango's website, download it through there. It makes you wonder though, why isn't it in the app store? And you see that a lot. For example, I'll do another one, Google Voice. Search for Google Voice, doesn't show up. Google Talk shows up, but Google Voice doesn't show up in the app world. So it's one of those things you're like, you really need to push these developers and push these people to get them into the app store. It's kind of a one-stop place. So it's kind of like 2005, where I have to go over to these different websites and download as opposed to one universal store. And that really shows that uh, App World isn't really taking off the way that it should. But anyway, you can download Foursquare, you can download things through here, and I'll show you, we'll go to Foursquare actually. We'll click on that, just to show you what it looks like. And you can see the star rating, I can go to download reviews, recommend screenshots. See a little description there, and I can contact support. So it's not quite as uh, graphically appealing, if you will, is something uh, from the App Store, from the Android market, but still, it's, it's functional. That said, they really, really need some more apps and they need them pretty quickly. You can see categories here, apps, games, and themes, which I can download. Of course, top 25, I can search, and I can see my BlackBerry app world. That shows what I've downloaded on my BlackBerry account, and then I can come in here, and actually, we'll go in here just to take a look. So you can see, because I do have a BlackBerry ID associated with this, it's gonna bring up and actually, no, I don't. I'm sorry. I synchronized it over the Torch 9810, so it came off of this one. So ignore what I just said. But uh, if you do have an old BlackBerry, you migrate over to this one. It's going to bring up all the apps you downloaded in the past in the BlackBerry app world. And it's going to say, do you want to download this one? Do you want to download this one? And you have the option to go through pretty quickly and, uh, and choose which one you want. Let's take a look at the 5 megapixel camera. Now, the big bummer here, it doesn't have autofocus. So we'll bring in the Samsung. Actually, no, we're not going to bring that in. We'll bring in the, the Torch, for example. There's no autofocus. So if you're, if you're out and about, you're on the town, let's say it's a nice sunny day, it's two o'clock in the afternoon, your picture's probably gonna come out fine. But if you're over here in like a situation like this where it's a little lower lit, you're trying to take something up close, like let's say the torch, now you can see how it's kind of fuzzy. There's no autofocus, so it's gonna take it like that. And just to bring it in so you can take a look, it's definitely fuzzy, it's not the best picture in the world. They say the autofocus was removed to preserve the small size. Honestly, I wouldn't have mind a little bit bigger size to have some autofocus. Whereas with this one, and again, not a dogfight, but just to show you in a comparison, the difference the autofocus makes and the flash, apparently. You can see the difference that the autofocus makes. Definitely clearer, and that's just kind of a frustration because you're like, I have this $250 device that doesn't have autofocus. And you're like, what in the world? Why did they, uh, they opt to leave that out? So definitely a little frustrating there, but it does have 720p HD video recording. And if you check out our YouTube page, check out phonedog.com, I did a sample of the, uh, the HD video recording, you do get that option as well. And actually, I'll play back on my unit, the, uh, the 720, so you can see it. Let's take a look over here. We'll bring up that if I can find it. I don't know if I still have it on here. Try and find it, let's see. Do I still have it? I don't believe I do. I think I got rid of it. Let's see, video camera. And let's go to view videos. Nope, sure didn't, there it is. So you can see what it looks like. And I probably need to switch the uh, the audio over. There you go. Charlotte metro area, and you can see some of the colors, the stop sign over here, the bushes. 
give you an idea of what it looks like. And so it is a little bit, uh, it's not necessarily you know, the best in the world. The audio is very, very good. It was a little choppy, a little brash at times, but overall pretty good. Who's that good looking guy right there? But uh, overall it's not bad considering it's Rim's first uh, handset to support 720p HD video recording. Now Blackberry Messenger, big thing, this is something they promote in a lot of their advertising. Uh, and this is something, so we'll, we'll load up this cool guy called Aaron Baker. Hey there, good looking. How's it going? Grab Blackberry Messenger so I can see when it's delivered to that device. And so as soon as it says uh, it's sending out right now, it's waiting for it to be delivered. But it's kind of an instant messaging. Think iMessage uh, on iOS, which is coming in iOS 5, and that's really what they're competing against, Blackberry Messenger, which is tried and true. So we're going to wait for that Aaron Baker to, Aaron Baker guy to reply. And he's going to say something. I have a feeling he's going to say something like, hey, yo. Oh, what do you know? He did. Hey, they're good looking. How's it going? So you can see it shows as R when read, D when delivered to the device, but not read. So it's kind of a you know, real-time thing for your friends, and it's only it's exclusive to BlackBerry users that have a pen, which all these devices come with a pen. And that's something that's been big about the BlackBerry platform for years. And they just continue to improve it uh, on these devices. You can see that the interface is a little bit different. You do get the option to... Uh, Send pictures, send videos, things like that. And there's a rumor that a music service is coming to BBM as well. So something to keep in mind for the uh, for the future. So all in all, it's a really great device. A lot of media, a lot more media functionality at least. You have access to the Amazon MP3 store, access to VZW Tones, Slacker Radio, and uh, videos and stuff like that out of the box. Vcast Song ID. So you get some media functionality to this device. Is it quite the ecosystem that comes with some of the more established platforms? No. Uh, it's not going to compete with iTunes. It's not going to compete even to uh, a lesser extent with the Android market and with some of the stuff they're doing with books and with movies. But it's a huge improvement for BlackBerry. Unfortunately, it's one of those things. BlackBerry's uh, reputation has been kind of tarnished as of late in the market, probably considering you know that and then the $250 price point. It's not going to sell as well as they, uh, as they hope it will. But if you have unlimited amounts of money, you're not really concerned about the price point, you want an awesome device. Where this thing excels, messaging, email, text messaging, that's where it's at with these devices, uh, with library devices, email messaging, uh, doing things like that. And fortunately, the browsing is a significant improvement, and uh, you know some of the media features have been improved as well. Can I recommend it? Absolutely. I'd recommend this in a heartbeat. It's a good device. It's the first BlackBerry where I'm like, wow, this is a uh, quite the media-centric, decent BlackBerry. Battery life's not the best in the world. With moderate use, I make it about nine hours. Uh, and that's, that's something to keep in mind. It is a decline in the battery life department. But... It's a big improvement uh, in other departments, and it's a great device. At 250 bucks, don't know if I could recommend it against the iPhone or against an Android device. Much more coverage to come on the BlackBerry Bold 9930. Really impressed with this device. If BlackBerry can keep it up and lower the darn price a little bit, I think this is a good contender and a, a welcome entry into the market. Keep it locked on PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage of this and the other Blackberries that are coming out, the 9810, the Torch series, and more. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog. We're giving away a bunch of tablets as part of our greatest tech giveaway ever. So keep that, uh, keep an eye out for that and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog. Follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron. Ask me any questions you have about this device and hit me up on my fan page on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Thanks so much for watching. More coverage to come on this bad, bad boy. Because I'm going to tell you, it's a bold device, pun intended. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time.